Hi, this is Mike from Microsoft Box and Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at the BIOS on the Gigabyte A320M H. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the BIOS on the Gigabyte A320M H and also some of the things which you can uh, look at to see which actually board you've got. There are three revisions of the board. There's revision one, revision two, and revision three, at least that's what it says on their website. But also it does seem that from the actual box itself, there's slightly more revisions within revisions as well. So the board that we've actually got here, despite being in a box which appears to be for revision three, is actually labeled up as being revision 1.2. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure where that comes from. I have actually had to fire up the board with a processor, etc., to see actually what version it is and what BIOS it's got. If you look at the BIOS revisions for versions one and two, and, and three obviously, they are all a little bit different. So the BIOS version on this board is F53, which does appear to coincide with the first revision of the board. So this is a revision 1.2 board, but in a revision three box, it, pe it appears to be anyway. So yeah, when you're looking for BIOS updates for your board, don't necessarily rely on the actual box itself to work out which one it is. Do check with the motherboard itself, get a processor that is compatible early on. Now, fortunately this, because it supports Ryzen 1000, 2000 and 3000 series, I've put on a 1700X for testing purposes and uh, spoiler alert, it doesn't do particularly well. It throttles like crazy. But anyway, just to get this video done, it was all I had on hand, so this is what we've had to do. So in order to update the BIOS if you want to, you can only update it via the BIOS itself. So if you want to do that, you can head over to the Gigabyte site. We've got this on screen at the moment. I'll put some links in the video description. So if you want to update it, uh, you can do download it onto a USB stick, and then you have to go manually into the BIOS to update it, which we'll show you a little bit later on. So in order to get your BIOS, if you go to the uh, Gigabyte site, again, links in below, Go into the download section and go into uh, all and then scroll down until you see where it says BIOS. There's actually been 12 BIOS revisions for this particular board. Uh, depending on which version you're on, then yeah, get whichever one you need. We're actually on F53, as I said a little bit earlier. And if I open up CPU Z, you can see here it shows you what the motherboard is. So A320-H dash CF on the end of this one for some reason. That's what it reports to in the BIOS. And the BIOS version is F53. So that is the latest version. So sadly, I won't be able to show you how to update it because it is on the latest one. But if there is a version which comes out a little bit later on, which I very much doubt, I'll try and update the video and do another one so you can see actually how it's done. But anyway, so that is how you find out which uh, version of the BIOS is on your board. You do have to kind of set it up there isn't a revision number actually on the board itself either, which makes things a little bit more tricky. So yeah, if you're looking at updating the BIOS, do be very careful with this particular uh, edition of the board. So with all that said, let's get into the BIOS and see what's actually in there. I'll be honest with you, spoiler alert, there isn't a great deal, but I'll reboot the PC now so you can see what's going on. So to get into the BIOS, all you need to do is when the system's rebooting, just tap the delete key, keep on tapping it, and eventually you'll find that the gigabyte menu will come up. And uh, yeah, this is a, I think it's a relatively kind of mid-range BIOS revision on this. So it's not the very latest type of BIOS, which is normally in the yellow and black. This is in the kind of uh, red and black, which kind of dates it to around about 2018, 2019, that sort of era. So anyway, first of all, uh, in the top corner, you've got MIT which is your advanced settings for overclocking, etc. cetera, which we're, isn't a lot on here because it's an A320 board. So we've got advanced frequency settings. And in there you've got CPU clock control, currently set to auto. You can do a little bit of base clock overclocking if you wanted to. You can type in a manual number, so 102. You can put that in there and then that will uh, lock in. So you can do uh, front side bus overclocking if you wish. Uh, next is the CPU clock ratio, that is set to auto. You can set it to a manual figure, but generally it will uh, it will ignore it when you reboot the system. So you can type it in, but certainly it won't keep it in there. So yeah, CPU overclocking, actually in ratio terms. Actually, I'll leave that in there because it makes no difference anyway. Um, yeah, you can overclock the actual frequency or the uh, multiplier on these boards. Uh, 
So CPU frequency, as you can see, is locked out. Uh, advanced CPU settings you've got, so we'll take a quick look in there. So you've got your uh, core performance boost, which is basically precision boost overclocking, so you can then choose to enable or disable or leave it auto. Uh, cooling quiet is for keeping, obviously, the system, if it doesn't need a lot of power, then it can reduce the frequencies, that kind of stuff. SMV, which is your uh, virtual machine mode, you've got enabled or disabled. Again, choose whichever you like. PPC adjustments, so you've got your various P states, three P state adjustments you've got there. Global C state control, you've got auto enabled or disabled. Power supply idle control, you've got typical current idle, typical current, uh, low current idle and auto. Again, most of these things, if you're not sure what they are, probably best leaving them to auto anyway. Uh, OP cache control, enabled, disabled or auto. Down core control, auto, you've got two, four, three and four, obviously. Depending on what processor you're using, your results here may be different. This is an eight core, 16 thread processor, so we've got option for four, which is the two plus two. Yeah, I would leave it to auto. And SMT, which is the kind of hyper threading, auto or disabled. So yeah, if you want to turn off your hyper threading, you can do in there. Press and escape takes you back up a level. So then you've got extreme memory profile or XMP. So for overclocking RAM, you can do that in the boss with this particular board. And as you can see at the moment, the RAM is actually DDR4 3600, but because this processor and the board really doesn't support that, I've downclocked it and set my memory multiplier uh, manually. So if we go into, let's disable it first of all, then we go to profile one and, ah, ah sorry, yeah, you have to type in the amount. So if you want um, 3333, press enter, and it'll basically pick up what speeds it can possibly do. So type in a manual number. So if you type in 36, it'll do 36. If you type in 29, it'll do 2933. You get the general idea. If you just want 2666, type in 2666. And yeah, it's confusing as all hell. Obviously they just have a, uh, an option to just go on a slider, but yeah, anyway. You get the, uh, the general idea there. So let's set that back to 3200. 32 and there we go so that's our memory frequency set 3200 so let's escape out of there and then we've got advanced memory settings so this is where you can set it a little bit easier so in the multiplier there again you can do the same sort of thing got memory timing mode auto or you can choose manual and go in and change all of these settings individually but uh, realistically you're probably best off leaving it set to auto unless you know exactly what you're doing uh, scrolling all the way down gives you all the settings there it's an absolute ton of settings for memory, so you can go into a great deal of depth should you wish to. Although, because obviously this is a relatively cheap board, the memory tracks aren't going to be the best, so I wouldn't rely on this as being a, a kind of a viable means of overclocking your system. So next up is advanced voltage settings. Now, realistically, we're not going to be able to change anything in here, so we'll go in. Uh, we've got dynamic V core, we've got V core SOC and DRAM voltage, and. Oh, yeah. You can actually type in something there, so let's type 1.3. No, doesn't seem to have uh, done anything anyway, so yeah, I would pretty much ignore that. PC Health, you've got uh, the reset case open status, case open, you've got your V core voltages, and all that kind of stuff shown there. Uh, miscellaneous settings, you've got PCI Express slot configuration, so you can set your PCI Express slot. This is for the 16x slot. If you've got an older device or whatever, you can choose uh, Gen 2. If you haven't got a Gen 3 card, etc., I probably guess best set it's auto, really. And you've got 3D Mark Enhancement, which is uh, you can enable or disable. Smart Fan 5, this is where we've got our fan control. This is probably what most people are going to be more interested in. So you can actually set all of your uh, CPU cooling operations. There's only two fan headers on this board, CPU and a chassis fan. And you can go ahead and choose where it is. So click on the top one there, so you can switch between CPU fan and the system fan and you can actually change the curve of the fan so if you set the CPU fan speed control set it to manual you can then move these around and actually kind of slide them to wherever you need to be so say for instance you want it to be maximum at 70 degrees thereabouts set it there and this will give you a, a relatively kind of gentle curve as things go up through the uh, up through the temperature ranges also, you can choose where the temperature is actually sensed from the CPU. Actually, on this CPU fan, it's only the CPU that is done. You've also got the temperature interval, so how often it kind of updates the temperature. 
and you've obviously got it set. So the CPU fan has got the multifunction, so either a PWM or for a voltage DC or voltage. So you can choose auto voltage or PWM. So this fan actually on this particular cooler is actually done in voltage. So we set it to voltage and we can crank these up a little bit. It's actually become much quieter already. So I think that'll do. So yeah, there is the uh, the CPU fan. Obviously, you can do the same thing with the chassis fan. Should there be one connected, we don't have one currently. Also, you've got your temperatures. So CPU temperature is 29 degrees C. Fan speed, RPM, temperature warnings, etc. You can set those for certain uh, limitations. So we could say kind of 90 degrees or 80 degrees. You can choose that if you want to, or leave it disabled. CPU fan fail warning. So if you've got a CPU fan which actually goes to sleep, uh, goes to zero RPM, like some of the Arctic cooling ones, then you can set it to uh, not actually go mad and start bleeping at you like crazy or give you a warning on every boot up to say that the fan's not spinning so you can enable or disable that and also you've got the uh, temperatures there for the CPU chipset VSOC, uh, System 1 and VRM MOS and as you can see even in the BIOS those are all pretty toasty which yeah this uh, CPU is probably not the best of ideas to actually use with this system so that is Smart Fan 5. You've also got uh, Key Flash there. So you can go into Key Flash, you can update the BOSS. If you have the BOSS on a USB stick, you could do the update from here. Obviously, uh, we've got the latest BOSS, so I can't really show you that. Next up, we've got System. Uh, it gives you the system information, system time date, that kind of thing. And you can set the access levels. Next up, uh, for BOSS, you've got the boot options. So if you've got multiple drives, you can go in there and choose which one it is that you're booting from. If you're maybe just installing Windows 10 for the first time, you can choose it, change it to USB, that kind of stuff. Uh, two boot options available, your boot up numlock state, your security option, full screen logo, uh, fast boot, you can have enabled or disabled or ultra fast. Uh, we'll choose disabled, CSM support. So that is a compatibility mode. Also you've got your PXE boot option for your LAN, storage option, legacy only, other PCI ROM priority, legacy only. Uh, you can set a admin password for the BIOS or a user password also. In peripherals, you've got the AMD CPU FTMP. Uh, you can enable or disable. Obviously, if you've got a processor which supports FTPM, then you can do that. Uh, initial display output, choose obviously PCI Express slot if you're using a graphics card. If you've got an APU, you'll have the option for APU there. HD audio controller, you can enable or disable. Above 4G decoding, you can choose enable or disable also. Trusted computing, again, for kind of thinking forward to Windows 11, you can choose to enable all of that and your USB configuration. All of that in there probably will be enabled on your system. The only one that might not be is probably port 60, 64 emulation, which is for kind of emulating older DOS type USB stuff. Also, you've got your NVMe configuration, tells you about your drive and capacities, etc. Next up, you've got your network stack configuration. Uh, this is currently disabled. AMD CBS, so this is your kind of um, kind of overclocking type stuff. But really in here, there's not a great deal you can actually do. But you've got some various settings there. And you've got some details here for the Realtek LAN controller, all that kind of stuff. Next up, chipset. So you've got the IO MMU, auto uh, enabled or disabled, so that's auto. SATA mode, you can choose RAID or AHCI. And NVMe RAID mode, you've got disabled because, well, I don't think you can actually enable it because you've only got one NVMe drive. You've got the chipset SATA port enables, you can enable or disable those. And you've got the four port ports underneath which you can choose to enable or disable if there's anything actually installed on them. Moving over, you've got power, so you've got AC back, so you can choose uh, memory, always on, always off. Power on by keyboard, because disabled currently. Power on by mouse, ERP. Uh, soft off by power button, resume by alarm, wake on LAN, high precision event timer, and CEC 2019 ready. And last of all is uh, in the save and exit se section, you've got save and exit, obviously makes a lot of sense what it is. Exit without saving, load optimized defaults, which probably for most people will be all you need to do in here. You've also got your boot override, so if you're trying to install Windows, if you've got your USB stick installed in this particular screen, you will have the option for boot from USB. And you've also got the option to either save or load profiles for the boss to actually, for 
overclocking and settings, that kind of stuff, should you wish to. But that is essentially it. So we're going to quit without saving and we're just going to go back into Windows. So there we go, that wraps this one up. A uh, quick tour through the uh, the BIOS there. There isn't a great deal you can do, to be completely honest with you. But some of you may find some of the settings, like the uh, TMP and also the boot override options, useful. Let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below. If there's anything that uh, you think I haven't covered or you'd like more information on, let me know in the comments and I'll try and answer it as quickly as possible. So this has been a BIOS tour of the A320M-H. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Oh, and don't use an 8-core CPU. Thanks for watching.